Hello, everybody, and welcome all. Thanks to LD Mobile. This is NBL Overtime. Record-breaking crowds. The Perth Wildcats and the Sydney Kings continue. Another throwdown classic. Some slight issues in Brisbane and much bigger issues off-court in New Zealand. Hello, I'm Cameron Luke. You can get involved anytime you like. Hashtag NBL Overtime. Hashtag NBL 20. Hashtag see incredible. The man who coined that hashtag is Corey Homicide Williams. What up? What's up, man? I'm good. Got a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah. We got a whole lot to get into. And also, I found something going through the archives this afternoon that I'm very impressed with when it comes to you. So I'll get to that. Plenty okay. to get into. Oh, that sounds a bit of a worry. <laughs> Liam Santa like, Maria. Yeah. No telling where you're going with this. <laughs> Hello, Liam Santa Maria. Do? I'm good. I'm good. You're right. So much to talk to. A record breaking round in so many ways. And. Uh, a lot going on, on and off the court. Let's start in Sydney. Sunday afternoon, 17,514 fans, of which I was one of them. Kudos Bank Arena was going nuts. And it was a really good game as well and a great cause. We had a standing ovation for the firefighters and all the people who are fighting the fires up that way and into a little bit of Queensland as well. But the on-court action in front of this huge crowd was good. Whew. Josh Boone looks a little more like the Josh Boone we've seen the last mm. couple of years. Lamello Ball was outstanding, but the Kings do what they do and get the job done. Yep, they did. They eventually did. They took a little while to get going, and uh, you tip your hat to the Hawks. They were terrific. But most of all, you tip your hat to the Sydney Kings and all the basketball-loving public up there in the Harbour City because they turned out in droves. The Kings drove them there with uh, all their marketing and... Um, to see a sea of basketball fans in that arena, it was an, it had an NBA look and feel about it. And uh, Cam, what you, I heard you were sort of had a little celebrity row type set up. <laughs> Did a nice little spot, and uh, you you're like Forrest Gump. You they just, <laughs> when it's a historical moment, yeah. you just make sure you're there. I, I, I tell you what, and I, obviously, I when I go, the crowds are there. So uh, any other <laughs> NBL teams want to invite me out, he'll pack the joint out. But no, I, had, I did have a nice little seat. They looked after us, which was nice. But mm. it was a great game, and I actually I got to apologise to Lamelo Ball because I actually tweeted halfway through the third quarter, and his third quarter was outstanding. And I tweeted, we're on uh, triple double watch here with Lamelo Ball, and then. 30 seconds later, he flopped, and there was a second flopping warning. It led to a tech found his fourth foul and no, stalled his an momentum. Instant, instant tech. Mm. Well, instant tech, was yeah. it? Yeah. How come? No contact. It, I didn't know that. All right. Because there was one earlier already on the Illawarra Hawks. So I thought there was a second flop, but okay, there you go. Well, let's talk just quickly, though. His third quarter was good, and while he struggled from the perimeter early, his third quarter and what we've seen glimpses of when he was on the foul trouble was exciting. Yeah, it was. I mean... When we, when we get to the segment, who is the most exciting point guard in this league? <laughs> it's him. It's him. We'll save that for later. Is that, is it, who is the best yeah, point guard? Yeah, who's the best point guard? Have we changed it? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I'm changing that too. I'm just going to add that into it. Yeah. So, I, uh, I actually want to just bring up something around... Illawarra, okay, because Sunday Deck was outstanding again yes. on Sunday, and something you raised Detch. just quickly. Sunday Deck. Is it Deck or Deck? It's right. Deck. Okay, Deck. Okay, my apologies. Shout Sunday. out to Sunday Deck. Yes. I got, I, I got informed about. Okay, this. there you go. You raised something last week about maybe not bringing another import and allowing Lamelo Ball and yeah. some of these young kids to shine, and mm. I actually thought a little bit about it on Sunday because he's playing really well. Nar and Greta aren't playing as much as they did last year. Lamelo Ball, of course, is, is headlining. They're not. Do we agree they're not going to make the playoffs? Of course. Do we also agree that maybe the best way to go about it and sell it, as you mentioned last week, was to say, we're going to back the kids in now and see where we go from here, rather than bringing another import, cost us some more money to replace Aaron Brooks? Yes, I still agree with me yes. from last okay. week. Yes. Do you agree? I say bring in another import. Okay. Why? You're not going to win any more games mm -hmm. without another import. This league is too loaded. You're not going to win any more games. But they did. They beat Cairns. Yeah, it's Cairns. They're oh, this battle for last Stop place. Stop being come disrespectful on, man. about. What Cairns. do you mean disrespectful? Where are they going to be? They beat Perth. They beat Melbourne. They just beat Brisbane. Where are they going to finish? Can they make finals? No, but so why are you being disrespectful? A, half the leagues, more than half the leagues, not going to make finals. Can Cairns make finals? No. Okay, they're going to be at the bottom. They're not going to. I the say bottom. they're going to be at the bottom. Seven for eighth. That win doesn't impress me by Illawarra by beating Cairns. There was an argument, and of course, foul and the situation with Lamello Ball is part of the game, but there's an argument that if Lamello Ball had a, hey. and the way he was rolling, they, and they didn't get beaten by a great deal on Sunday. Now, no. you still got to tip your hat to Sydney because they win those games, and that's why they're the league-leading team right now. But 
they, they were up to with their eyeballs before foul trouble. His fourth foul forced him to the bench. They're playing. I'm not saying they're playing better without Aaron Brooks, but they're definitely impressing with the guys who are getting opportunities. They're playing really well right now. They played really well last week against Cairns with the squad that they have. They played really well this week against Sydney with the squad that they have. And not only that, are they playing well? They won one game, nearly won another, got close in another. But Sunday Detch is getting time. Todd Blanchfield is back to being who we know he should or could be. And the window of opportunity is there for Dan Greeter, Angus Glover, and these guys to come up and play better. Sam Froling still to come back into this lineup. I firmly am of the opinion mm -hmm. that they shouldn't bring someone in. We've been sitting here for the last couple of weeks, and we will talk about Brisbane in a moment, but talking about Ruben Tarangi last year, wins six man, wins most improved, about to go maybe to the next level. And then they recruit imports in his position and it stalls his momentum. We're in the exact situation right now with Sunday Ditch, who's like, well, hang on. His, 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 his game in Cairns was outstanding. He yes. was really good at both ends on Sunday. Yep. They would be in the exact same situation if they bring in an import. In fact, it's probably more important for Illawarra, who need him to develop and get better for future seasons, to continue to have those guys who play well in their own backyard rather than relying on imports. I, I just think that... as the I understand what you're saying. They're probably not going to win, although they've been in games, a handful of games, a huge amount without an, a second import. But I also think you can sell it to the fans who know that the future, considering Lamello Ball is a one and done mm. here in the NBL, they need to have some kids in Australia playing good basketball. Mm. Agree. Hashtag NBL overtime to get involved. Do we all agree as well that Melbourne, Sydney and Perth are probably three locks for the playoffs? Yes. Yep. All right. So, really, the conversation's around that fourth position. Currently held by South East Melbourne, Phoenix, but Adelaide last night went to the fire pit and we're incredibly impressive as we look at the ladder. There's Brisbane who are floating around, although lost on the weekend, so tight at the moment. I know you're big on the 36ers pushing into that fourth position. Well, for me, the, the fourth position is wide open. Mm -hmm. mm. Southeast Melbourne, Phoenix, Adelaide, Brisbane, if they get their stuff together, all have an opportunity to get that fourth spot. So mm. it was a great start yesterday in that game. They led from the front. Jerome Randall was the Jerome Randall from old. And that's how they're going to need to play in order to get it done. We often start making assumptions at this time this of is, NBL season. This is what we do. <laughs> yeah. Quarter of the season in, let's go nuts. Yeah, and things always seem to turn themselves on their yep. head. But my assumption is that the Sydney Kings are going to keep rolling on. The Correct. eye test, everything suggests that that's going to be the case. They're going to have a stumble every now and then. They lost in Melbourne. That was a cracking game. I expect Sydney to be on top. The big races for me is who finishes second out of Perth and Melbourne and thus has home court advantage in that first round of the finals, which I think is really big in that matchup. And then, of course, who gets fourth spot. Now, for me, at the start of the year, coming out of the off-season, looking at the rosters, I was on Brisbane and... As I wrote today, I'm starting to feel quite lonely on Brisbane Island because oh. everyone's falling off. But look, they are four and five. Exactly. Okay, so they're four and five after their first nine games. Two thirds of their games thus far, six of them, have been on the road. It's really tough to win in this league on the road. Very few teams have a winning record on the road. So they're about to enter into a much sort of nicer part of their schedule where they'll have a bunch more games at the Armory. And I think that's a team that is going to. They're going to finish just above 500, maybe a game or two but above 500, I think that's going to be enough to get done. Whereas South East Melbourne, who have been really impressive thus far, they are really up against it from here on out. They play Sydney this week at home, and then nine of their next 13 on the road. They need You called the game last night. They need Ty Wesley back. They have been great without Ty Wesley, which I don't think at five and four where they are now, had we have said Ty Wesley's going to play six minutes of the season in the first nine games. We wouldn't expect that. They've been outstanding. Last night was probably the first game they've been outworked by the opposition, but they need Ty Wes. I reckon time's about right, isn't it, homicide? I mean, also, you got to look at it like this. Adelaide lost four in a row. No one wants to lose five games in a row, so you're going to go up against a desperate mm. team that really wants to get a win. And with Jerome Randall in that type of form, He's just as good as any point guard in this league. And he he go the team goes as he goes. You know, they switched up the lineup. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that was obviously everybody would think, especially after you win, that's a great thing. Okay? They needed to change some stuff up. You lose four in a row with the same lineup. It's not working. So they uh, put Griffin on the bench, Ramon Moore on the bench for health reasons or whatever. 
T starts, uh, Obi Chase starts, Obi Kai, sorry. And this gives Jerome Randall, at least to start the game, an opportunity to be way more aggressive. Mm. And aggressive he was, 15 points in the first quarter. And what, he finished with about 27 last mm -hmm. night. He, he lit him up. That was the Jerome Randall we all know and love to see play. When he plays like that, he's, he's, he's <laughs> tough. You know what? I'm not one to toot my own horn, at least two or three <laughs> times a show, but my wild card final idea that we spoke about last oh, year, yes. 4v5, a one-off elimination game, say on a Thursday night leading into the first round of the playoffs, based on what we're seeing right now with mm -hmm. Phoenix, with Brisbane, with Adelaide, we're going to get to New Zealand in a moment. God knows, eh, with the talent they've got, if they get their off-court stuff right, might take off. Whew, it'd be must-watch basketball TV, but CEO and Commissioner Jeremy Lalega, we'll talk about another time. But right, let's get to New Zealand because as talented as they are, their off-court dramas are going to a whole new level, boys. And it is a continuing concern, as we see. Obviously, Matt Walsh has spoken today and we'll allow you to get a little into that in a moment, Liam. But the fact is that this New Zealand team, as great as they are and fun to watch when they're playing well, it's at different times been a car crash off the, off the court. The hard part is that we could all see it coming. Right? I mean, I, you could see during the off-season and the things that were taking place that the, that the culture wasn't right within that club. Now, they continue to say the culture is pretty good. Tom Vodanovic, in his comments after the incident on the flight, said the hardest part is that I've, I'm, I'm helping to um, feed this idea that our culture is not right when it is. Matt Walsh today said our culture is pretty good on the day-to-day -day basis. Okay, we're not there watching, but you can, you know, like if it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. The culture is not good there right now. And you build on-court success from your culture, not the other way around, which I wrote today. And um, I think it's a real shame. And, and Matt Walsh was asked today on Sky Sport New Zealand, uh, are all of these off-court disruptions, are they impacting on on-court success? And he essentially said, no, I don't think they are. That would be an excuse to say that they are. I firmly disagree. There's a lot going on over there. I just wish them luck. Good luck in fixing it. Where do we sit with RJ Hampton? Like we sit here and we discuss the mellow ball and RJ Hampton, who was the first next star to put his hand up and everyone went nuts because he legitimately had college scholarships left, right and centre. He chose to come to the NBL and, of course, we know the words he has used about being in the NBA compared to a college athlete. He's here playing in New Zealand, first year pro as an 18-year-old kid trying to learn both on and off the basketball court, smack bang in the middle of this. Mm. Like, oh, we're a long way from it. Mm. So we have no idea how much it's affecting him, if at all. But, geez, he's in a lot harder situation than where Lamelo Ball, mm. where he, or did Lazada, who are playing in teams, one who's really successful and one who's getting a lot out of it and the team is struggling. But this is such a weird situation and not great for RJ Hampton, you wouldn't expect. He's handling it amazingly. That he is. Isn't it? You can watch, you watch him play, you see his body language, listening to him talk, he's handling it with aplomb and you tip your hat to him. And, yeah, it's not ideal because part of what they come over for is, and you spoke to these guys about it pre-season, Corey, is playing against grown men but also... Being within a, a professional organisation where you learn how to be a pro. And he's getting mixed role modelling in that regard. Certainly Glenn Rice Jr. wasn't a great role model in, in that instance. What happened on, you know, with Tom Vodanovich doesn't help. But there are some guys on that team that would, you know, Tom Abercrombie being one, who have taken him under, you know, the, their wing and um, giving him really good sort of advice and, and setting a great example. So it's a mixed sort of set up. It's not ideal. It's not as good as what those other guys are getting. But credit to RJ himself because he's handling it beautifully. The best thing out of this whole situation is that his parents are with him. Mm. But more important, learn from the mistakes of others. So it's almost, you don't want this to happen, but it's good that it's happening now. So you can see what not to do. How to be a professional player off and on the court. How do you handle yourself? Off and on the court. Look, we are all brands. Everybody here. You wa People watching this, us sitting here. Every day you get up, put your clothes on and go about your business till the time you take your clothes off and go to sleep. How you handle yourself will strengthen or weaken your brand. Period. So he's getting a valuable lesson in what not to do. This is perfect. 
Hashtag NBL Overtime. You can get involved any time you like. Hit us up on Insta or Twitter or at NBL. And Andrew French, I think it was. And if I've got the tweet wrong, as we put the tweet up, there you go. How's Dan Shamir doing? And I'll paraphrase here, but obviously a third of the season in. Highly recruited and, and highly profile coach and, and one who brings a little bit of emotion and passion to the sideline. But how hard is it to read what he's done a third of the way year, con 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 considering... What's been happening off court, which... So he hasn't done nothing. Him. What is the record? What are you here to do? Win. You're here to perform and win, okay? We rate you based on your performance mm -hmm. as, a, as a coach, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call him, director of whatever, <laughs> or player, right? What is the record? Two and whatever. How much talent do they have? I was up here arguing with you, defending them. There's no... This is a tier one team, blah, blah, blah. You looked at me like my man. Relax. No, they're not. Yes, they are. Yes. No, they're not. They're not making playoffs. That's it. Well said. Well said. And you, we, he's a European coach, right? And he's got his systems. He needs a full preseason to put everything in place. He needs a much more harmonious roster, a much better situation to work with. He's been working with a tough spot. Um, but... You're right. I mean, the results speak for what they are and the team is sort of falling apart around it. A valuable lesson learned. And certain things need to happen for you to realise it. I argued with you and said several times in this seat, in that seat, this is a tier one team, they're making playoffs. I figured because they were stacked, mm. it would happen. Mm. Talent does not win. Perfect example of it. One player goes down, all right, cool. Scotty Hobson goes down, no problem. You bring in Glenn Rice. You know his rap sheet. If it says 10 times on a rap sheet, issue, this is an issue. Not even two weeks, what happens? Come on, what, nobody, should, nobody should be surprised. And nobody's acting surprised. So get what you pay for. It is what it is. We're three games into the throwdown. It's something that, of course, we're a lot excited about. Anytime you have the role, we're in the same city. With three points separated two games. So we see the opener where South East Melbourne Phoenix were able to get it. Then on Saturday night, another classic in front of a packed Melbourne arena. It was a one-point win to Melbourne United as we look at that. Kendall Stevens, of course, the, the Robertson and Mellow Trimble going. At Chris Golding, he's had a really good start to the year. But, boys, everything so far that we hoped it would be, it has been this role. Everything been. has lived up to the hype. I mean... Them two playing against each other every time is worth the price of admission in itself. It's nothing but drama, great plays happening. Like you said, three points. Three points, right? That's mm -hmm. what you said? Mm -hmm. three, three points. Three points in two of the games. Two in two of the games. Blowout, but One was a blowout, happens. but I mean, this is what you want. Rivalry. It's all happening. Big players stepping up, making big plays. And let me tell you something. Keith Benson, mm. oh my goodness, 20 points, eight rebounds. Five blocks. What more would you want out of this big guy? He's been stinking it up all year. <laughs> Let's keep it real. <laughs> but he showed up today. He did. He threw this one. And that should have been an air one. That should have been the Come on, ref. So this is this is this is where the controversy or the conversation is. That looked like there was contact, and then we see this, which essentially decided the game, and Trimble gets fouled. No, come on, Cam. That was come on, Corey. That's Look a not. Block. Look at that. This is not a foul. Boom. You saw his body. Hit. Hold up. Hold Listen, up. I wish we could ring that back. There is no way that's a foul. I'll tell you why. Go tell on. me why. Because it wasn't a foul down the other end and when Keith Benson Look, got hit. I'm with now, you. it's I not agree. the same play. No, right. I agree. not the same play, but it's the end of the game. Andrew mm -hmm. Gay spoke on the broadcast about context and the state of the game, and the coaches always tell the, the ref. Scott Butler says this all the time. They always say, we want you to make the same call at the end of the game as the start of the game, which, fair enough. I disagree. I, I agree with, with Drewy. It's the last play of the game. Let the players decide it. And we don't, if we can avoid it, we don't want it decided on the free throw line. So cool, you didn't call it down one end, don't call it down the other. And then he makes or misses the shot and we either go to overtime or they win the game. But to send him to the free throw line and to decide the game off a tiny little bit mm -hmm. of contact like that, when a tiny little bit of contact didn't get whistled down the other end, I think South East Melbourne could feel a little aggrieved. And that's, that. that's a big thing in sport. 
You just want consistency. And, and it'll be frustrating. If we're sitting in the stands watching this and we're questioning, imagine trying to play in a high-intensity game mm. where a win... And we talk about that bottom part of the four. We spoke about South East Melbourne Phoenix being grouped in that team. We think of fighting for fourth spot. That's the frustration from the players. Where Benson, let him play. But you got to let him play the other end. It so was consistency a big is of course whistle. <laughs> South East hey. Melbourne go 0-2 oh, there and they start from that weekend as a result yeah. and they fall away. Big yeah, whistle. I'm going to ask you one thing, Corey Homicide Williams. Is Cairns the most exciting team in the league? I love watching Cairns mm -hmm. type bands play. They definitely bring it. Mm -hmm. They lead from the front. I mean, Scott Machado, the dime dropper, he will lead this league in assists. You have said that from the start, and so far you are correct. Nate Jawai going in, doing his thing. When he's playing defensively, they're up and at him. You got that man right there. Space Cam, as we will definitely see way more highlights of him finishing with aggression. Um, I just love the up-tempo play that they bring. And there we go right there, right on cue, when they went out to RAC Arena mm -hmm. out west and got it done. They will upset a lot of teams. They will be... In a lot of games, it's literally just about them finishing these games off. And this season, they have been extremely impressive to watch so far. No joke. I would not be shocked if they start to piece it together and by the end of proceedings are involved in that conversation down the stretch along with Brisbane, South East, oh! Melbourne and Adelaide. Oh, my God. <laughs> DJ Newbill that was... with the Philly defensive slide. <laughs> <Why he cheers? laughs> I like this. He helped him, made sure he didn't hurt himself on the fall and then stared him down. Um, seriously, this team can beat... They almost beat the Kings on in opening round. They've beaten Perth, they've beaten Melbourne, they took care of business in the Sunshine Stoush. They're up and down, but boy, if they, their starting unit, plus one, because it's either, right now it's Majuk Dan coming off the bench, before it was Nate Jowai, is, is right up there. And they are starting to piece it together and they got after the glass, they're long and active defensively. They're actually a pretty good defensive team when they have their ish together. And um, they can shoot the heck out of the thing. I wouldn't be surprised to see them go on a bit of a run and get involved in that. They go seven deep, and I think that's deep enough to contend in the NBL. Seven deep. They, they, the they go eight. They go eight. Eight. Well, who's off the bench? Jerick. Yeah. Kenny. Okay. Yes. Okay. And, yeah. and the big fella. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Not a cupcake league. He told you in the preseason as well. Hey, the Wildcats shouldn't be surprised because they continue to do what they do. They went two and zip on the weekend. Is Bryce Cotton the MVP leader right now? I mean, Bryce Cotton is, is a stud. He's always in contention. Mm -hmm. Last year, that was my pick for MVP. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he's doing everything he usually does. This is nothing new. Ooh. Shout out to Dario Hunt. <laughs> you were hyped, Friday. You and I commented was on I? this game. You were Ooh. going nuts. Yeah, that was definitely... Dario Hunt showed up. Griffin showed up. Um, it was a real good game mm -hmm. to watch. Mm -hmm. Exciting from start to finish. But um, Bryce Cotton, I mean, he's just... This is what he does. He's a, he's a rock star in this league. He's a superstar. And as well as that man right there, a quiet star. Mm. Eyes on Tokyo. Nick K is going to, he deserves to go to Tokyo. They have to reward what he did this summer. Well, this, I guess, is winter here. Mm -hmm. August in, in, in China. They have to reward him, man. They got to. Uh, Bryce Cotton, 100% is the MVP right now. He's the clubhouse leader. Mitch Creek is in that conversation and there's been some other there have been some other guys that have played really well, but he the everything revolves around Bryce mm. Cotton offensively for this team. Um, and yeah, he has 36. That 36 against Sydney went under the radar because they didn't end up getting the win. Had 34 in this one. And you know, you think you've got him down, he comes bursting out in the second half and, and shoots his team to victory. And all these other guys, you see Jesse Wagstaff hitting shots, even Tariko White. They all get their looks, or a lot of them, off of the attention that Bryce Cotton draws. 100% the most valuable player in the league. Just a bit of news out of the Wildcats as well. Tariko White, who hurt his knee slightly in Sunday's win against the Breakers, will be reassessed later in the week. But looking like probably doubtful to play this weekend. All right, plenty more to get into, but right now, all thanks to LD Mobile. Top 10 plays of a huge weekend. Round 7 is in the books. Let's make it cook. It's your Aldi Mobile NBL Top 10. At number 10, hotter than a candle, it's Jerome Randall. Letting it fly from the chemist's warehouse because he's got the deep heat that can't be beat. 
With more range than a cell tower, Jerome brings the rain shower as Adelaide gets us rolling at number 10. On to number nine, and it's Andrew Bogut working on the screen and release the Casper Ware beats the big beast. Bogut sticking that big bear paw in the air and hammering with flair, getting Sydney in there at number nine. At eight, Damian Martin gets faked on the back door, but he's still tech quick to get off the floor and prevent the score. Jerome must think Damian's got a clone because he was all alone at the throne, but it's Martin with the defensive burst for Perth at number eight. We check in with the Phoenix at number seven to watch Mitch Creek sneak to the rim like a phantom on that one. John Robertson breaks free to get into the teeth of the D, and that's all Mitch needed to see at number seven. At six, Melbourne's gonna need some relief from Keith. Benson defending from another dimension as he blocks the first and still has a burst to swat that second shot. Mello Tremble gets rejected, then Joe Luala Chul is shacked in a fool as he gets schooled at number six. At number five, man, this is straight vertical that's really scary, particularly for Harry. Dario Hunt rises up and it's falling, falling short in his efforts to get off the court. Dario Hunt in at number five. On to number four, and it's McCarran sharing across the floor. Money making Mitch busting out the tricks, and Shea hits the tray as Melbourne gets flat silly with Illy at number four. At number three, Scott Machado deft with the left on the pass before Space Cam gives us another patented rim crash. Cans delivering more slams than a wrestling match as Oliver pours that one down the hatch in at number three. On to number two, and Jay Crockett is in the business of getting vicious, leaning into the rim like he's on Hop Vitamins. It's Jay Crockett taking off like a rocket in at number two. But at number one, DJ gets the steal and then it gets real. Sobey's tracking back, but he don't get Nathan but penetration as Newbill rocks the nation on this tremendous detonation. Nobody can top the Taipan slams as DJ gets the number one play on the NBL. Cut it. There it is, DJ Newbill right on Sobey. Will that be dunk of the year? No. Okay, cool. Ooh. All right, Santa's watching time. He doesn't miss a thing. Studs and Duds is out on nbl.com.au right now, but this is a little more lighthearted. What have you said? There was only one place to start oh, with okay. Santa's watching this week, and that's in the tropics. <laughs> hey! <laughs> with Alex Lauten, <laughs> who's in full <laughs> retirement style. Hey, what's going on with Mirko Jerick's headwear? What's with the headdress? <laughs> Mirko Jerick. Corey, talk me through Sean Long. Shacked in a fall. Oh, my oh, God. No. Let's see this. What? Did you not see this? <laughs> oh, oh my, that was a live play. He thought it was out of bounds. I want to know what Trimble was going to try and argue there. <laughs> Dave Anderson's like, I am really feeling 39 right now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this from Jerome. He's like, what's this? I Kuru. Okay. I'll give it a whirl. <laughs> can, I, can I drink this? Okay. <laughs> Are you sure? Okay. <laughs> this is black water. This is South East. Mar this is not for drinking. This is like a sponsorship thing really? that's sitting on the table. It might have been there for weeks. <laughs> he's like, I'll tell you, he likes he's it. He's like, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, has anyone noticed Simon Mitchell's little hand towel? Yeah. Have you noticed the hand towel, Corey? Mm -hmm. Have a look in. Look at in his, Simon Mitchell's hands. Little hand towel he has oh, at all times. Oh. It reminds me of Joe Connolly. Of course. From a few years ago, Sydney Kings fame. And the uh, towel he used to carry around, Jerry Tarkanian stop. <laughs> haven't seen, <laughs> haven't seen Simon Mitchell put it in the mouth yet. It looks a bit dirty, his towel, just so I wouldn't be doing that. But uh, I need to ask him about that, why he's carrying that around. All right, Sanders watching. Make sure you get involved. All right, we've seen Jerome Randall there. We're running out of time, but who is the best point guard in the league? We'll start with you, Homicide. Scott Machado. Whoa. Wow. Well. So you're all the other pure better, point guard. All the other point guards haven't been consistent enough for me. He's been consistent. He's been pretty consistent. Who you got? Casper Ware. I got Casper Ware as well. I got Mellow Trimble number two. Ooh. I like Machado as a pure point guard, but I understand Mellow Trimble, I think the last couple of weeks has been great. Mm. All right, so the city jerseys. Yes. This weekend. 
Guys laugh. He forgot to bring him in, our producer guy forgot, so we have to look up <laughs> at the screen to have a look how cool they are. Which one's your favourite? New Zealand. New Me Zealand. too. Oh, hey. Wait a second, I'm a New Zealand guy as well. Really? really? I like New Zealand the best. Yeah, they're, 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 I want that uniform. I want All the right. shorts. Make sure you tap on the NBL store. I'll get you that uniform next week. You want that? Extra large. Ec no. Large. Work out. Get large. to where we lower. We're out of here. It has been NBL over time. We ran out of time, but that's what we do. See you next week.